Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bernardo, who is uh, going to come and share all his tips and tricks that he's uh, stumbled onto uh, and, and figured out as in his uh, app building. So Bernardo. Oh, thank you very much. It seems uh, we all want to make money with our apps. Uh, so that's uh, hopefully something that I'll be able to, to share uh, my experience today. And um, so the goal of today is really tell you what I've learned about uh, making money and monetizing your apps after building uh, 19 apps already in the marketplace. And the, it, this is going to be a very practical session, so I would uh, recommend that you download the apps, uh, my apps, you can look it up uh, with my name, uh, because I'll be showing real examples of how this, some of these techniques apply to different apps. I mean, I have some screenshots, but it's easier if you try it in, in, in the phone. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the why some decisions were made and then actual real numbers and real examples and real code about uh, how the, does that translate to code and that translate to money, uh, bottom line. And, and please uh, ask me any questions that you have. Uh, so I have 19 apps. Uh, uh, the, the latest one is LaserLink, was approved yesterday, so it's in the marketplace. And you can see there are free and paid versions of all of them, except uh, one, Liquid Paint. Uh, I've been developing for about a year. And my wife is not very happy about my weekends because it takes a while to develop these apps. But uh, uh, based on that, I've tried free, I've tried paid, I've tried different models. And, and I'll, I'll share what I, I've seen with those this, uh, these apps. Um, as I go through the slides, I marked with the, this thing, very important. So where you see that, really pay more attention because this is some of the tips that have made more impact when uh, monetizing the apps. Uh, in particular, if you have only a little bit of time, download these three. These are the most recent ones, and those are the most advanced examples of what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, Boxit, Naval War, and LaserLink. And, and you'll see these uh, this techniques in, in all these apps. So, so the first question I think uh, I, I want to make sure you ask yourself is, uh, you know, you, you want to make money, but really how much time, how much expertise, what, uh, what do you want to achieve? I, I don't want to tell you how many hours I've spent on this, but uh, to make money, you have to spend time. And I've actually spent thousands of dollars on external help for some of this app. So, so it depends on what you want to do, that's what you're going to be able to achieve. So if you want to spend a lot of money or if you want to spend a lot of time or not, that's, that's something very important before you start running apps. Some of this take probably three, 400 hours to write uh, and test. So it's, it's, it's quite a bit of uh, investment. Um, and of course, then you get the rewards of all of that. And also, think about what's your area of expertise. Um, as you'll see, all these apps, you'll start to see some common patterns. I, I, there's no 3D graphics there. Uh, there's no advanced music in all of them. That there's, what I can do well is uh, some uh, reasonable set of apps. And those are the ones that, that you can see there that are mostly in Silverlight, uh, mostly not very advanced animations. Those are the ones I feel comfortable. Each of you will have to decide What's your area of expertise? Because you'll see later, you have to do a really good job to make money with this uh, with these apps. The, the next thing is uh, you're not going to make money of free apps, and and and, and that's that's a, an, an important uh, uh, statement here because I see there are three types of apps, and again, as you think about your app, you have to put it where do I want this app to be? If it's free, it's free. You don't make any money out of it, and and you'll see some apps that I made that are free. The next one is it's paid by ads. So you're selling ads. And that's a subtle distinction I'll show later why it's important. But so either it's free and it's totally free, or you're going to sell ads, or you're going to sell the app. You can mix a little bit of those two models, and I'll, I'll show some examples. But in general, I try to figure out if this is the way I'm going to make money with a certain app, or this is the way I'm going to make money with a certain app, or I'm not going to make money. I'm just going to give it out for free. And it, depending on what you do, the app is different. Uh, forgetting about free, if it's going to be selling ads, you need to sell a service. An ad is an impression, so you want to make sure there are more impressions of that. There's a, it's, you want to make sure people come back to your app and use it more and more and more. When, when I see comments in my apps that say, I'm, I'm addicted to this app, that's perfect. That means they're coming back. They're coming back. They like that experience, and they're coming back and seeing it more. Whereas if you're going to sell it, it's a little bit different. You need to give them enough 
that they have fun, but, it, but then they, they want to buy it. And after they buy it, then that's it. That's the monetization. There's no more monetization. Uh, so, so those are a little bit different models. And then the way you develop app and then the way you do updates, it's different depending on what type of monetization you want to have. Um, I also, what I've done is I looked at all the competitors, iPhone, Android, and others, and figure out how they do it there, what works, what doesn't work, to be able to choose the right model for each app. Um, this is not working well. So, so all the apps that you saw before, they fall into these categories. So I have a couple of apps, they're free. They're basically free. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about how that works. Uh, you see most of the apps I have right now are based on selling ads. And the last one is one that is uh, actually a paid app. Yeah. Uh, even though both, all of them have a paid and a free version, or paid and trial and free version, the monetization is very different for each of those. And, and you'll see the trade-offs I've made in the apps. So let's start with the free. Free, to me, again, this is my experience. It's an experimental app. I try to do some experiments, or I try to, it's not very polished. I'm not going to be committing to doing any updates. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. If somebody buys it, in case they buy it, you know, it's good. I'm not going to continue improving it. And there are two. One uh, is my first experiment with XNA, just a cool uh, drawing program. And actually, it's the one that, as a percentage, most people buy. I, I don't know why. It's like 10%. Uh, but but uh, I mean, I make probably 10 cents a day out of it. And this one is just uh, speed flashcards to try to touch two cards and see how fast you can ma ma uh, map two different cards. It was most of an experiment to try to port it to Windows 8. But it's there, and I get a little bit of money, and I'm not going to support it. And if people complain a lot, maybe I'll fix it. But really, I'm, I'm, these are more of an experimental type of app. And that's good. You can do those. But if you want to sell it, which is why I have one app here, it's very different. You need to make sure the initial reviews are awesome, and you need to make sure that you have enough content that you get people hooked, and then they want to buy the whole thing. And uh, some ways of doing that is to create an app that is crippled. That means it, ha it doesn't have all the functionality. Of course, it doesn't have all the levels. It has enough levels to get people hooked, but then they want to buy more levels. Um, it, it, it needs to be so good so good that people want to buy it. Actually, I, I received a comment from one of my apps uh, a couple days ago that said, you know, I love this app. I would never pay for it. So if that app, I have put it as paid, I would have sold probably 20 total in the year. Probably it's not the, the quality of some Xbox games or that they wouldn't want to buy it. But they would be willing to pay if it's free. I mean, they're paying me for ads. Um, it, it, it needs to be very simple to buy the paid version. There needs to be a big button, buy now, and it takes you to the buy version. Um, updates are not that important. Once they bought it, they bought it. What's important is the reviews. Uh, there's a really, really good article here. I, I recommend you take a look at it. It's from a developer that analyzed how uh, iPhone paid apps sell, what doesn't sell, what are, what are the strategies. And um, I, I actually used some of the ideas. It's not easy. I mean, and uh, what they were saying is to be able to do a good paid app in iPhone takes at least $50,000 of development because there's so much competition there. I mean, we're, we're lucky in some ways that we don't have half a million, oh, have a, you know, half a million apps yet, but the apps are getting better here. So there's going to be a moment that you are, if you want to do this, you'll have to invest a significant amount of time of money and professional development to compete in that market. Nevertheless, I, this is really good analysis, tells you how much money other apps have made and uh, haven't made and why. And they don't talk about ads. It's only about paid. <coughs> so let me, let me give you the, the example of this one, which is a baby sound cards. It's an application I did for my daughter. To, so she can actually, it's a flashcards. You touch them and it makes a noise or it makes a sound in English, Spanish, French. Um, but this little app, I paid uh, more than $800 in just sounds and music and images, so high resolution images. It's better than any iPhone equivalent app. There's a couple similar li like that. Uh, but really, my only goal here was to teach my daughter, and, but to sell it. To sell it and to able to recoup the money in at least, uh, at most a year. It's not a lot of money, but I, I mean, it's, it's practice. So how, do I, how did I get people to pay for this app? And actually, it is, it is the app that I sell most of all the other ones, even though the number of downloads is very little. Number one, it's a better experience. So for example, if you, ha if you already have the paid version, you have the full screen. If you don't have the paid version, it gets compressed, and you see the ad. So you see better images. 
The second one is you get a buy now button. And in this case, for this app, it's great because kids are touching the screen. <laughs> so two things happen. A, I get a lot of good clicks. So the, the, the click rate, the, the, the CPM is just extremely high. It's $9, $8. Everybody's touching it. And parents don't want that, so they buy it. I mean, really, because the kid is touching everywhere. Um, and they want kids to learn English and to learn Spanish and to learn French and all that. Uh, and the other one is I don't give them all the content. If you see here, there are four categories. So for the first category, they get everything, which is a really good experience. But for the other categories, they only get part of the content. So if they want to, the, the kid really likes trucks. Well, there's no trucks until you buy it. But, but it's not that they, I gave them only one icon. I gave them the whole first screen. So there's enough content that they can actually use it. But they end up buying it, a high percentage of them buying it. So this is some examples of how I made an app wanting to, to people want to purchase this app. So that's, that's an example of a paid app. Um, so before I go forward, any questions on this? Yes. So is the, is the, the paid, paid trial version is similar really to the free version? The paid, uh, yeah. actually, let me go to the next, next slide, which answers your, the question about paid versus trial versus free. And I, I've seen very many presentations here about paid versus free versus maintaining different versions. And I'll tell you how I do it, which um, I haven't developed code in 20 years, so maybe I'm doing something weird, but it's, to me it's very simple. I have one code for everything. Paid, free, trial, it's just one code. I change two things every time I want to recompile. Number one, I put some constant with certain values. And number two, I change some properties of the name and the icon. That's it. And, and you'll see the implications of that. But so, so the version, you see all my apps if you go to about in the apps. You'll see the F, or you don't see the F, depending on the constant I put there. And inside the code, I change force free to yes or no. And then what happens is inside the code, I do things like that. If that variable was defined, then during runtime, when, in, when I am initializing the code, I, what do I do? I remove buttons, add buttons, hide images, shrink the screen, uh, things like that. So basically, I only have one version of the code for the paid. And there, paid is, hides things. Trial and free are identical. And I get a lot more downloads of the free than of the trial. Because try is, trial is in the paid category. So people like to, like to try the free. Well, if they want a free or they want a trial, whatever, they're going to get ads. Because that's how I make money. I, I mean, I invest hundreds of hours. That's, that's the return. They're getting uh, great support. That's a service. They're getting great support. They're getting updates. They can complain about it, and I'll, and I'll fix it. Um, and, and, the, and the paid actually removes all that. So that's one way I'm, I found of uh, being able to simplify the number of applications I have. Uh, so I, I have like 10 different files, each of them with just changing these variables, and it gets changed. So le let me give you an extreme example of these. I have two apps in the marketplace, Dots and Boxit. This is the same code. This is changing those two variables. And that's it. And uh, I change the two variables. I change the, if it's going to be Boxit and Dots. And the same app gets compiled and runs differently. So I put it in different categories, different names, with different music, different look and feel. But you can see it's the same app. And, and I didn't have to maintain two different versions of the source code, di different, uh, uh, different files, different formats. Just make sure they, they are synchronized, nothing like that. It's just one simple, one single version of the code. And that really helps when you have 19 apps. And you have to, then suddenly I find one new technique, like the ones you'll see today, and I have to apply it to 19 different files. It took me a month to actually go through all the apps and add that new feature or, or trick. And then again, so I have to try to simplify the number of uh, different files I have to maintain. And, and I hope this helps you because you're all figuring out how to do the paid, how do I do a trial, et cetera. Yes? How do you know what price to charge for the, for the paid app? Because you know, isn't it possible that you would have somebody who's so addicted to the free version, they see so many ads that you would make more money on that version than you would if you charge 99 cents for the paid? I mean, how do you know what to charge there? I asked my son. And my son looks at the app and said, Dad, no, you can never charge more than 99 cents for that app. And he, he buys all the apps. So 
Uh, there's only one app that I have that is more than 99 cents, which is exactly the app that actually mo uh, uh, more people are downloading and using by far. Actually, not downloading. It's about half of the downloads, but much more usage than any other. And that I actually have increased the price. So actually, exactly, I want people to be using the, the, the free one more and more. But if the, you put a paid more than $3, especially the category of the amount, more than $3, I, get, I start to get complaints in the, in the, in the reviews that it's too expensive. Uh, so it's a balance. Probably no more than $2 for the type of apps I have here. Um, in, if more than that, you get complaints. And I don't like complaints in the reviews. Uh, you'll see later, you have to have some really good reviews. I, I'm sorry, the, there was a question. How old is your financial consultant, son? My financial consultant, how old is he? Uh, he is 13. Yeah, so he can use some of the more advanced applications. And my younger consultant is uh, one year and a half, and she's the one who helped me try out the, the one with the sound cards and, and all that. And, and she always touches the ads because they're more flashy. So that, that increases my eCPM. And actually, my friend's daughters also tried it out. And actually, all the, all the friends that I know that have babies her age, they're all using that app and it's teaching them new languages. So it's good. Uh, yeah, no, but he, he uses a lot of apps, mostly in the iPhone, but also on the Windows phone. And he, he told me, oh, this one, no more than 99 cents, Dad. That's my financial consultant. Uh, though, most of, the, most of the revenue, by far, comes from the ads. So, so you've seen here, free, what is really free. You've seen here what is paid and how to actually maintain some of the code for the paid version. So now let's focus on the, on the ads, which is probably what most of us are doing anyway. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And you are not, uh, what's really important is you're not selling an, an app. You're, you're not getting people to draw, download an app. What's really important is you're getting people to use and download an experience. And I'll show you later what, what I mean then. But in summary, an experience is something that your users, your, your players, are gonna be, or your users of your app, are gonna be so happy, so excited, so emotional, so they feel so good of using it, they wanna use it more and more and more and more and more. Because you want to show more ads and more ads and more ads. So that's what you need to achieve if you're planning to sell ads. And there are three things that I found we need to do, or you need to do, or I need to do, to get more, more ads. Number one, is get more downloads. So you need to make sure more people download your app. Number two, you want to make sure every download gets used more time. And number three is you need to make sure you're delivering even more ads every time they're using it. So those are the three things. And, and uh, there, uh, let, me, let me tell you how that works in real life. This is the number of ads I get from all my apps. This is exactly the last 12 months as of 4-1, April 1. Uh, all the number of ads that are downloaded from all my apps together. The number of downloads probably has gone up 20% since here. Not much more than that. So it's, the downloads are fairly stable. Now, I realized that I needed to, to do more things so the players use the apps more time. So you'll see exactly what, what I did. So, well, you know, if they started to using it more time. The same number of downloads per month, but they started using it more time. Then I realized I could do other things to, to show more ads in the app. And that increased it more. So there, and, and while at the same time, they continue to use the apps more. So uh, the scale of, of, the, of, of the graphs is not very good uh, in, in, the, in the pub center system. But bottom line, this is 1x, let's say, uh, 10,000 ad views per day. And the, the top part is 4x. So it's 40,000 apps. So bottom line, if you have a, a good app, by using all these techniques, you're able to multiply by four the number of ads that get downloaded, i.e., multiply by four your revenue. So you're making $1,000 a month. This is $4,000 a month by doing all these things that we'll see today. So, so it's, it's, it's important to obviously start with a good base. I mean, this is not magic. If your application is bad, well, you're not going to make any money. But, but then there's some techniques to make, make a, lot, uh, a lot more revenue out of those. Yes? How do you get paid for ads? Is it the time that the ad is on the screen, or? Uh, ad, uh, the question is, how do you get paid by ads? Um, I've used several different uh, providers of ads. Uh, by far, I think the one in Microsoft is better, Pop Center, and you get paid by views. Other, uh, uh, Google, Mobfox, get, uh, get paid by click. The one from uh, Windows, you get paid per view. So you need to show a lot of views, a lot. Uh, right now, I think I'm showing about 
three, a little bit more than three million a week. So it's, uh, it, it, you need to show a lot of ads to be able to make revenue. Now, to, to be able to, to sell those ads, as I mentioned, you have to have more downloads. Each application has to be used more time. And then each, each usage has to deliver more ads. So let me, um, let me actually go through some of these things, actually how, we, how I did it in the different apps. So the first, as I told you, we have to we have, to have some, a good app that people like to use it. So the first tip is choose the right category, choose the right app, similar to what we talked before. Uh, let, let me give you a, a, the only sad example I have from all my apps is this one, Dots. It is much better than any iPhone app that has Dots. It has much, much, much better intelligence. The AI is great. The graphics, I think, are very good. It's much better than anything that's in the, in the marketplace today. But it wasn't the first. There were already two other apps there. It's taken me four months to even try to catch up. It's catching up. It will catch up in about two, three months, and it will pass them. But it's taken me probably seven months to catch up. So if you're not the first mover in a category, it makes it a lot more difficult. So established first mover, it's very difficult to move it out of its category. So, uh, so the, the apps that I have, many of them were the first in their category, and they continue to be really good. So competitors just cannot get there. That means if they're in the top 20, you get more people looking at your app. So you have to choose the right category and make sure you don't copy, you don't make just another, another uh, uh, tic-tac-toe, please. I mean, who's going to download that? And there are like 100. Yeah. How the do you catch up? Uh, you, I'm you sorry? You get the download data of the other app, right? How do you know whether your app is catching up? With that? How do I know if my app is catching up? Well, there are two ways. There are a couple of apps in the marketplace that tell you more or less your, your, your ranking. And you, you can actually see any app ranking. That's not exactly download numbers, but it tells you the ranking. You can see if the other one is going down and you're going up. And the other one is, I don't know how the math is done in the search, uh, in, the, in the Windows phone, but it kind of follows downloads. I mean, there's some download pattern there. I, I'm sure the, the math has something else in there, probably also uh, the, the, the number of stars you get. Uh, but, but, it, but if I see the other one going down in the ranking and mine going up, it, it probably means I'm getting more downloads. It's, it's not a certain thing, but yeah. That Which one? The oh, uh, App Tracker or something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll look for me later so to find out the name of the app. But there are a couple of apps that actually track apps. Uh, and most of us developers look at it and, and you can see actually the rankings of, of any app. Doesn't give you exact download numbers, but at least the app ranking, you see if it's going up. Now. It, it gives you a, 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 a hint of where you are. So think about the category. If not, you're going to have to spend a lot more time and effort to be able to move within that category and be in the top ones. Being in the top one gives you more downloads. Uh, the, other, the other one is, is uh, interesting. I call it no user left behind. So you have a good app. You want to make sure everyone can use that app. That means please go back from time to time. Make sure it is actually usable in all the markets. The Windows Phone uh, uh, Marketplace team adds more, uh, more markets frequently. So I, I know it, it, to me it takes about a, probably an hour, more than an hour to actually make sure all my apps go in all the markets every time. But within an hour of work, I'm able to distribute my app to 20 more countries. It's just amazing. So it takes a while, one hour of my time, but then suddenly everybody in 20 more countries is able to use it. So make sure you always have all the countries. Uh, my apps have been uh, not accepted in China a couple of times because they have some certain additional regulations. Dots in particular uh, was not accepted in China. So I need to change it because I want to make sure it is in China. I want to make sure every country has my apps. Uh, yes? Uh, do you have to localize for those countries? Do I have, the question is, do I have to localize? I don't have to localize. I've tried to localize two of my apps. I don't get more, more downloads in those countries. So uh, unfortunately, but it's a lot of work. The other one is, this is a very interesting one. Make sure your app runs in Noro and Mango, in the previous version of the Windows Phone and the current version. I made the mistake, one of my apps, I submitted it in Mango first, so I can no longer update it to Noro. But so now what I did actually with Link, the, the laser link, the new app, the first version I submitted was with Noro, with the previous version of Windows Phone. And immediately after it was available, I updated it to Mango. So now I have both versions available in the marketplace. So even if it's 15% of your market, well, you don't want to lose, I mean, it's 15% free market. Anyone, I have lots of friends whose wives or husbands haven't updated the phone to Mango, well, they'll be able to use my apps. I want everyone to use my apps. And the last point is a couple of my apps got warning that they don't work with less than 256 megabytes, uh, especially one that uses like a huge cache for thinking. Well, I changed it, 
to make sure it runs in all the less than 256 devices. So you have a great app, make sure everybody can use it. Okay, so, so nobody is left behind. So I, I'm still tweaking it to make sure it's accepted in all the countries, especially China and some of the new countries. Yes? Could you speak a little bit higher? The question on the first movers slide, if there's an app uh, that is well established in the market and trying to compete with it and it's a paid one, would you advise submitting one that is free that you think you will catch up quickly? Knowing that you have better content, better experience, better... Okay, so the question is, there's an existing strong competitor, how do you compete against it? Do you, if it's paid, do you do a free one? Um, I mean, that could work. Uh, we'll need to think about the category. You'll need to see what happens, how, what works in the Android and iPhone marketplace. And it, and, but at bottom line, it has to be much better. If it's 99 cents versus 149 cents, really not going to make a lot of difference. Uh, and if it's free, 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 uh, it will definitely free will download more than, than a paid one, but it really has to be much better. It has to be much better to try to catch up. Um, if the other app doesn't have a free version, uh, then they have a weakness there. They, 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 that's an opportunity you can go in and, and sell your app or promote your app. Yes? Well, I think it's not, uh, just uh, to add to your answer, if, it's not, if the free app, free app is not much better than the paid app, you're actually advertising to the, to, to, for people to buy the, the, the paid app. Yeah, so you, the, the, the other answer is you, make, you, only, you need to make sure your free app is better than the paid app. If not, then people will try yours and then will say, you know, Ah, uh, sucks. This one is better. And they move to the other one. Uh, there was another question. Yeah, uh, how, do you have any suggestion on how to raise the visibility of your app? I mean, uh, how to promote it? Or how, how to promote your app. Yes, I have some, some, uh, some recommendations later, coming later. So th this is just the first stage of making sure you have a good app, making sure that everyone can use it. Um, so we have time. Take a look at this for 10 seconds. This is a new app. You want to download it, and it's for Bagamon. Okay, Think, just choose one that you would download. Just choose one. Okay, time, time is up. Who choose number one? Okay. Who would choose number two? Okay. Who would choose number three? Hmm. Who would choose number four? Who would choose number five? Interesting. Who would choose number six? Yes. Uh, this is my app, and I spent a couple, of, uh, $280 to get this one designed, this logo. Whew, safe. I didn't waste my money. So you won't see that logo anywhere because it's going to replace that one. So again, uh, now let's see how you promote your app. That was, now this chapter is about this. You promote your app, the first thing is people look at the description and look at the logo. There's some logos that don't look that professional. There are some logos that look more professional. Some logos that look cute, but depends on what you want to achieve. This is the first time customers are going to, or your users are going to see your app. It has to be really good, really professional. I found some apps that actually, I download them. They're really bad, but the logo was very good. It looked professional. So lots of people downloaded it. Unfortunately, then the reviews were really bad. Lots of bad reviews because lots of people downloaded it. But I mean, I'm assuming your app is very good. Okay, so then go. So this is one way of promoting and making sure that the icon looks very professional. And I'll tell you which designers I use for this for these logos. Uh, so that's one of the first thing you need to do. Have a really good icon. The next one is you really have to have some extremely good reviews. You cannot put an app that people complain about that just kills you. Going, uh, getting out of that hole is just impossible. So uh, you want to make sure you have an app that is better than anything else that's in the Windows Phone. But also, many people have used the iPhone or Android. So it has to be better than anything that, that exists in those markets. So the first thing I do before starting any app, I read the reviews and analysis of all the apps that exist out there. I find out what works, what really doesn't work. And whenever I create a new app, I make sure it's better than any existing app out there, even from, from iPhone. So customer, people that might have both phones prefer, prefer mine. Of course, one of the things critical is you, have, you should have no bugs. Now, um, so about the reviews, when you get it out, you need to get some feedback. Uh, I, how, how many of you are familiar with this screen? Oh, okay, most of you. But this is the screen in the App Hub. There's a little thing here called reviews. And I think it's one of the best places to find reviews from all the countries. There's some apps that do that, but the apps don't, that do that don't cover really all the countries, especially the Asian countries. 
So uh, you can look there, and I translate some of the comments. I look at this every week to see which comments there are for all my apps. I want to make sure that anything that's broken gets fixed. Uh, and these are examples of, of comments that I received. All of them I take in action and fix them. I want to make sure the service is good. I want to make sure people get a better experience. Uh, one of the first comments I got from Bagamon is that it was awesome, it was great. What the design was terrible, awful. They didn't want to use it because it was really awful. So I spent hours and hours making sure the design is really, really beautiful and, and pleasing and people enjoy it. And now, now they download it and use it more and more. I mean, again, it's part of the things you need to do to get users to download and use your app. Uh, there's some confusion with some of the menus. I fixed it. Um, and and we'll, you'll see later, people want to use it more. So somebody tell me, you know, I finished the 24 achievements. Why, do I, why should I continue playing? Oh, no, this is bad. I want you to continue playing. So I added many more achievements to this app. I, this is a service. I mean, I want them to be using it and using it to get addicted to it. So again, no box. Look here. Look at all the reviews. Make sure you address any questions, concerns that, that they have. Um, the other one, how do you promote your app? Well, I have, there are 50,000 people playing my apps daily. So every time there's a new app, you open any of my apps, they have something that's called more games, more apps, and whenever there's a new one, there's a little number that pops up and says, oh, there's a new one. So they can come here and they can see all the apps and you can click there and they can download it. So starting probably in a couple of days, all the new apps that I have will start to show LaserLink, a new app. Again, that's one way of cross-promoting the apps to make sure that I control that and I can point people to the new apps that are out there. So, I mean, I have some people, users that like my apps, hopefully they'll like the new one. Uh, there's a question. Pointing them to the, to the new apps within your app, or do you point them to the new apps on the marketplace? Uh, so where am I pointing to? This, when you click here, you go to the Windows Phone Marketplace, to the exact link for the download, so they can see the app, click download, and install it. Uh, yeah. And if they have the free version, it points them to the paid version as one of the ones in that. So it's cross-promoting it. Now, does this work or not? Uh, I did some analysis in a 40-day period. Um, I'm deleting some of the data because I have like 400,000 rows of data every day that I analyze. But let's say I, I kept about 40 days. Out of those, in those 40 days, I had uh, 67,000, 63,000 different players. Uh, some of them were, 53 were playing all my games, have played it at least once, uh, and about 5,000 had played uh, at least two games uh, of, of the ones that I have. So, it does work. It does help. I mean, if, if people like your app, they might try another one. If they cross-promote it, you can, show it uh, you can show them the other app. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't prepared to, to, I don't have slides for that, but let me, let me hold that until the very end to make sure I have time, and I'll take you, to tell you how I get all the data. I get data about everything. Every, anything that crashes, anything that fails, any usage, any settings, too much data. About four gigs of data every day. Uh, so you have a different data. How do you put that in your apps? Some server you're running, or just an ad? No, uh, how, do I, how do I do this is the question. You know, one of the things I'd like to do later is so it's a web service, brings data. I mean, no, right now it's hard coded, so I have to recompile the app, add the new image, add, and then some. Now, that's an, an excuse, you'll see later. So, so people get, see that there's a new update, they want to play more. Oh, what is in this new update? Even if it's, this is the only thing in the new update. <laughs> now, typically I try to give them a little bit more. I try to give them. A, like some of the box fixed or a couple more achievements. There, there's one app you'll, you'll see later that, oh gosh, there's one person who's pay, played almost 9,000 times. So they reach all the highest level in achievements. So every time I go in, I try to add more levels because this guy is just off the roof. Uh, so I try to add a few more things every time I, I add things and, uh, and then I, I slip in this new, this new app. So it's an excuse for them to, to Get to, oh, yeah, I remember this. And I haven't played this in a long time. Let's play it again. So that's one of the advantages of, of sending. But it's a lot of work. If I add a link, laser link, well, it's 19 apps that I have to update and then send it and test it. I want to make sure you, I, I actually just, one of my updates failed about last week. And, and, uh, and, and lots of people are complaining. One of the 19, when I updated, I updated something I shouldn't. So you have to be very careful. It's a lot of work. Um, but you know, it's, that's the way it's working right now. Keep on showing that thing, right? Even if the user has already No, 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 no. I, 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 okay. I want this to be a very pleasant experience. So the question is, do I keep showing this number? So I show them things that I want them to show without bothering. So the first time this new version comes in, they show the number. They use it. If they exit the app and enter again, 
they won't see that again. Uh, th I, this has to be a good experience for them. Uh, so I think somebody asked in a previous session, what happens if I show ads everywhere where the, uh, that's here so that the person clicks it? They'll click more ads. I, want, I don't want them to click more ads. I want them to have a pleasant experience so they're really happy with the, with the, with the app. So the ads have to be designed as part of the program. It, it's a whole experience. Now, again, talking about the experience, as you use your apps, you have to be happy using it. And I've, I've seen lots of feedback uh, that when they complain about the sounds, or in, this, in the case of uh, Battleship, Naval War, what I read everywhere is that people wanted to, to feel you sinking the ship, explosions. <laughs> okay, so I went and purchased lots of sounds, lots of images. I hired a designer, and you'll see the feedback in that app. People hear it with headphones because it's stereo sound, how the ship is sinking and exploding. That's what they want in that app. In, in Checkers, you don't, you don't want the <laughs> things to explode. But in this one, it's an explosion, you're seeing. Well, that's, that's I, I don't design sounds. So I went, uh, these are sources of things you can use, and, and, and the presentation will be shared. I mean, please take photos, but the presentation will be shared so, so you don't have to uh, uh, do everything now. But you can either go to iStock Photo. I spent hundreds of dollars of images. I, hire, I, I have a friend who's a designer. I spent thousands of dollars in design. Uh, I actually just found this new auction site in Australia where I can hire a designer, and that's the one I use for logos. Uh, Larry fonts, my fonts, great fonts. I purchased several fonts for the apps. Sound Rangers, awesome place to buy sounds. And, and, and test, test, test. So you can see here, there's some good graphics, there's some good design, there's some, this is checkers, so checkers for, for professional players with professional boards or for kids with colors, with aliens. I mean, it, it's a different sounds, it has to be fun. Uh, this, ju just to give an example, the dice and the pieces, I spent 10 hours making sure the dice rolled really smoothly and the pieces, uh, I've got the right mathematical formula, so the pieces move really smoothly. This one, is, Bagamon, is, is played thousands of times a day because people feel fun playing with it. Again, I want them to see more ads. That's the reason, uh, I, well, the reason I'm doing it is because I love to develop, but if I'm gonna develop, I wanna make sure it's a better experience. Uh, yes? So when you talk about hiring designers, are you mainly hiring people to create your images or do you also hire UX designers to like, you know, work on the flow of your app? Uh, okay, so the question is, why do I hire designers for? Depending on what your skills are or not, um, in, in different games I do different things. For this one, I hired a designer to do all the core graphics, and that's about it. For this one, I didn't hire anyone. I just purchased a couple of things. The rest I designed it myself. Uh, but I'm not a designer, so it took me a lot longer. Um, so it depends on what you are. The, 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 the flow of the app, no, I do that all myself. And sounds, I always purchase them, yes. I'm sorry, the question there? So the game, do you have it uh, uh, with ads as well? All of the games have ads. Okay, so this one, it seems like landscape. If you have the ad up, it ah, okay. takes uh, lots of uh, space, right? Well, how do you make sure an ad in a landscape one doesn't impact you? Well, you can see exactly the shape here. It's the shape of this. So this doesn't impact the game. It is this, the whole board is designed around the ad space. So if, if you are no, don't have ads, you see this great looking nice header with some information about the type of game you're playing. But if it's covered, it doesn't hinder the game and it looks part of the design. Uh, you have, uh, typically what I've seen done in landscape is, is putting the ad here. Sometimes it's in the bottom, but it's a little bit cumbersome. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Yes? When you hire designers, do you retain ownership of the assets? Uh, the question if uh, when you hire designers, if you retain the ownership, yes, of course, they build it for me, it's mine. Yeah, so I can do whatever I want with them. And I decided to purchase the design, but then I have to do a lot more work. If the design doesn't work, I get the Photoshop files or the Illustrator files and I fix them myself. Uh, but I own all the assets, of course. Do you own yeah. them exclusively? I'm sorry? Do you own them, the assets? Do you own them exclusively? Do you own them exclusively? Yes, they are designers that created app, uh, content for me, for my app. So I own the content, I can do whatever I want with it. Yes. Uh, couple more questions, yes. Okay, I, I don't develop games, but uh, for the other apps that I develop, they, uh, users always want to see a Metro UI. Have mm -hmm. you ever seen any complaints about your games that don't use the Metro UI? Like the black and white, uh, just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. contrast? Um, I, uh, so the question is more is about the Metro design, who, uh, which apps do you see, which designers can do it. Uh, as you can see, Metro design doesn't work for these apps. Yeah. So. Um, you could get, probably in the design crowd, someone that could do some metro design. Have you, seen, like, have you experienced yourself that it makes a difference or 
probably doesn't. I mean, depending on the app. For this app, it wouldn't work. Yeah. But for many uh, apps that are not games, but apps apps, I, th I think sometimes it looks good. But you can actually see some of the apps when they're really good. There are a couple of apps, like uh, one from Stocks and CNN, that are really well done. And um, I think, uh, not, not, not eBay, there's another one. Amazon, I think they're really well done in Metro. So you could do it there, uh, but it's, uh, having it blocky and square doesn't mean it, it, it cannot be done very nicely. Yeah. But you need to spend a lot of time making sure it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, la last question so before just, me. Just as a rough guideline, how much do you pay per sound to get professional quality sounds? Oh, how much do I pay per sound? How much would you pay for an awesome sound? No, you, I, I'm asking you. $10. Okay, so it's about $1.99. Really? Yes. Okay. That's cheap. So, well, uh, I, I, I purchase packages. So with the, with the package, I spend, I don't know, $300 in sounds, and it's about $1.99, really. So shuffling of the boards, dice, explosions, sound, music, water. And actually, the latest one, Laser Link, has, has a whole music track behind it. That was more expensive. Um, so again, it just, I mean, it's, it adds up. But, it, but it's still, it's, uh, I mean, one of the latest app has probably 40 sounds. Still, I mean, it's not a lot. Yes? I paid around $3,000 for the rate. For the person to actually narrate the book. Oh, so, so, so you're still in the $3,000 for narration. Yeah. Um, well, one thing, uh, oh, the, the baby app, well, let me give you some suggestion. The baby app has uh, someone speaking in English, in French, sp French, English, French, and Spanish. Different sounds, 80, well, uh, 84 sounds, every, every, 84 uh, words. So I started looking for translation services. Well, I found a translation API. We'll talk, well, I'll, I'll tell you the link later, but it's a translation API. Originally started for the iPhone, but now it's available on the web. So uh, you can try 50 different sounds for free. So I tried 50 different sounds for free or different, different words, and I recorded the translation directly from the computer. And that's the, that's, the, that's the sound you hear. And, very, and you can choose if it's an Asian or a European woman or a, or a young person. So I chose certain different accents. So that's the way I got uh, the, the word, spoken words with the same accent for the Baby Sounds app. So you have to find out some, most of these resources exist already. Um, and you can use them for your app. Please, no bugs, no crashes. Really, it doesn't help. I mean, there, there are a couple of things that you have, you have to do. You look at your stack traces in App Hub, and you can see uh, not only the number of, the number of bugs, uh, the number of crashes, actually, which app. So uh, actually, obviously, here you can see that I, I submitted a pro a, a, an app with a problem. So I detected it a couple days later, submitted a fix, and then it went back to normal. So the, even if the app is being used more and more and more, there are no more crashes because I keep on reviewing every month which are the things that are crashing the app more, and then fix those. So even though the usage is more, the, the crashes are less. And I get lots of comments saying, oh, finally, an app that doesn't crash. Uh, I'm glad, but it's sad that I mean, you have to make apps that are rock solid and try them with different phones. Uh, and uh, I'll get a little bit of info on the, on the uh, telemetry. I have a web service where I can, that, I can, that I use for everything, for, uh, for storing the gains, for storing the high scores, for storing everything. Uh, lots of other things, uh, and I store every time there's a, uh, most of my functions in the code, if something shouldn't happen, like a value shouldn't happen, I, instead of showing a, a, an error, error, I send it to my app via web service, I just submit the, all the string of the status of that uh, at that moment, and if needed, I pop, I, I show a, a message, but if not needed, I try to correct it and keep on going. I mean, it's a game, it's not a financial app. So, uh, in this case, I, I get uh, probably, right now, I'm getting only about three or four failures a day. And, then and most of them are because people are, haven't updated the app. Uh, but I know exactly when something failed, like fix it on the next release, the things that I could detect are fixed. The things that crashed, I, I fix also. Uh, and, you, and, and this is the way I do some of the telemetry. So every time somebody uses the, an app and submits a new high score, I have it. Every time there's an error, I submit it here. Every time somebody reports online game that somebody's using a dirty word for the username, I ban them. <laughs> I mean, that's all the thing you have to do. So I, now I'm a, a banner. I find out who's not behaving and has an ugly name when paying uh, checkers, I ban them. Or I find out there's a new version and I inform everyone there's a new version, uh, things like that. So, so that's the way I do all the telemetry in the database. It's a fairly large database. Uh, yes? Where are you 
hosting your services? Where are you hosting your services? I knew I was going to get asked that. Um, you get about four gigs of data transfer, about 400,000 rows of data every day. So I, I have it in a place where I'm using SQL Server and I get, uh, I get to pay a very premium service for about $12.99 a month, uh, which is GoDaddy. I use it and I use SQL Server there and it works really well because I don't need a lot of disk space, but I need a lot of bandwidth. And that I uh, have one of the best services they have that they manage it, and that's the one I've used. Uh, that way I can host the web service and I can host the SQL Server database. Works really well. Really well. And you know, I've never, I, I, I thought about hosting it myself, but a couple of times uh, I've seen GoDaddy actually being swamped by people trying to take it down, but they, they're really experts on that. I don't know, a few hours later it's all fixed. I wouldn't be able to do that. So they take care of that at a very reasonable cost. Actually, you the device agent there, uh, did you experiment uh, with uh, requiring the identification of the phone versus not requiring it? Okay. I uh, the, the question is, uh, do I use the device ID? Do I uh, require customers to put, or users to put their, their ID? How, how do I manage the ID? Uh, from the very first app, I took the device ID, hashed it, and this is the code that I, I haven't done anything else more sophisticated. So what happens is when you change phone, you lose all your, uh, your progress, which actually I've already fixed with Bagamon. Uh, with Bagamon, you can upload your data and move it to a different phone in case you get a Nokia 900. Uh, because I got some complaints that people have played 5,000 times and their son uh, erased the phone. So they were not happy. So uh, I try to make them happy and now they can move to the new versions of the phone and don't lose any of the bagamon data. I have a few more slides. Let, let me, well, one more thing. How do you correlate the old device to new device? Uh, if they want to move from devices, I require an additional user password. So that's, uh, you, go and try it and go download bagamon, see how it works. But uh, for the same device, in case it gets erased, you don't need to do anything. If you want to move to a new device, I tried many different things. You know, forget it. You need to f find a user and password that you put in the original one. If you lose that, well, then uh, there's nothing I can do. But I would assume somebody has played 5,000 games. We'll, we'll try to put a username that they'll remember. If not, I mean, that, there's only so much you can do in a game. Now, um, a, a couple more topics. So you have a good app. People know about it. Has a great icon. Has no bugs. Well, how do you make them use it more? So there are four techniques I've used. And, and they actually have been very successful. Uh, they, they make uh, people use it more and more. They, they make them want to do more. One of them is leaderboards. So that's one of, um, all of these are done through uh, web services. Uh, one, the other one is online gameplay. The other one is achievements. And the other one is sharing content. So, so let, me, let me give you an example. This is a, a leaderboard. So this, this actually, you can go to Na Naval War and you see, I think the top one last time I checked had played 9,999 9, times. So it's probably more than 10,000 times now. Um, so I keep adding levels here and I keep adding um, achievements. So that, that, that's one way of doing leaderboards. Uh, the other one is, uh, is achievements. And I add more achievements and achievements, some of them are easy, some of them are very difficult to get them to play more. Um, and actually to give them a, a reason to keep on playing, it's a challenge. Uh, the, the new one I'm, I'm trying is sharing content. So you, this is a puzzle and you resolve all the puzzles, uh, but you can also create your puzzles and share them with different people. And, and does that work? Well, this is, uh, this is one example of uh, Bagamon from a couple months ago. And uh, the number one had played uh, five th more than 5,000 times. If each game takes three minutes, this person has played more than 279 hours. And that was a couple months ago. I think last time I checked, uh, Naren had played more than 6,500 times. So, and this is because this game has leaderboard and achievements and smooth gameplay. Uh, so all of these techniques uh, really, really help. Uh, and uh, another one, another way of getting them, uh, getting them excited is notifying them when there's a new version. Many people don't know how to download new versions. So I need to help them, make sure they know there's a new version. So one of the things I have in web service is the latest version that this version can upgrade to, because not all of them are upgradable to different versions, like not all cannot be upgradable to Mango. Um, but if I mark it, immediately all the phones that get used in the main screen show some type of button that says new version. Ah, there's a new version they download it and they get to try out whatever is new. If it's one of my new apps or most of the time there's some new content, some new ads, some, something there. So it gives them a possibility and that there's more out there so they can try it again. Uh, there's a question. I mean, maybe it's not related, feel free not to answer, but how do you, how do you detect 
the, 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 the new version is already in Marketplace. Oh, no, no, this is totally manual. I, I, I submit it to the marketplace. I know it takes a while, so I keep on checking my phone. And oh. probably after two days, I, oh, it's in the marketplace. Then I notify in my database that there's a new version. Yes, and actually, it seems in some markets it appears much faster. So for uh, LaserLink, I, I already was getting users playing it and playing it, and I wasn't, hadn't it accessible in, in the US. So I, make, I, I wanna make sure after the US takes uh, probably one more day, I would assume that that's the right time, and then I tell everyone there's a new version. But the reality is I even tell them typically a week later, because if there's a bug, or there's something I didn't realize, I don't want 100,000 people downloading, or no, 5,000 people downloading it, bad. So I wait until I see there's a, a week, nothing seems to be wrong, then I notify people. Um, oh, gosh, there's, there's this, I, and then let me get through this. This is really, really, really important. Um, okay, so ads, let me just explain a little bit more how ads work. Ads work by, there's a web there's some service, I don't know how it works, but it goes to the central database of ads, and it shows if there's an ad, boom, and it shows it. And then 60 seconds later, it goes, looks for an ad, and if there's an ad, it shows it. If it, there's no ad, well, it doesn't show anything. Um, so there are a couple things you have to do. The first one is tell it to auto-collapse true. That means whenever there's no ad, it just disappears, so it, there's nothing being shown on the screen. And, and if you don't do anything, if, if you leave it at no refresh, it does it once, checks for a new ad, and then nothing happens. I mean, it only shows one ad. This is really, really important. I think I haven't seen this documented anywhere else. If you put auto refresh enabled true, that means every 60 seconds, the ad control looks for an ad, and if it finds an ad, it shows an ad. Why? It might fail. Either the network is down, or there might be not enough ads in the, in the supply chain from, uh, from Microsoft. So if it fails, well, 60 seconds later, you try again. 60 seconds later, you try again. If it finds one, it shows one. That's typically how most people develop their apps. What I, what I do is something a little bit different. Because it is auto-collapsed, I, 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 every 30 seconds, I check. Well, actually, it's, it's every 60 seconds. If there's an ad, perfect. If there's no ad, uh oh something happened. That means there's no supply, or the network went down for a little bit. I check 30 seconds later, manually. So I do the auto refresh false, and I manually check that. Therefore, you can see that just by doing that in, four ad, in five ads, I was able to improve it by 25%, the number of ads that were shown. You have to be very, very careful, because the rotation, if you do it too fast, it eats battery, and it's a, a lot of battery. So this adds a lot more ads to, that are shown. Again, as I said, they're using it more. Now I want to make sure they're always seeing an ad. You can't go on 30 seconds. You cannot go? You know, policy says you can't do that. Okay, then. Yeah. I, I own that. Okay, then I didn't know that. Now I know. <laughs> well, uh, now I know. But there's a new one that works well, which is. Uh, you, can, you cannot go under 30 seconds by pub. That's under pub, 30 seconds. That's right. Pub center by pub center. Yeah, no, that's what I knew. This is 30 seconds, not under 30. 30 seconds is fine. Yes, uh, that's why I said 30 seconds. No faster. <laughs> no, 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 no faster. There are many reasons. I mean, they, it, it will kill your battery. Yeah, I heard about 30 seconds. That I knew. Uh, so that, that, that uh, allows you to do it, uh, and I typically do actually about 35 seconds because there's some delay internally about the, the thinking, but it, it, it lets you uh, find uh, ads uh, faster. Uh, and um, there's another strategy. So let me give you an example. There was an app here. I submitted an update, and I didn't realize I had turned off, the, turned off this, uh, this new capability, this new strategy, and the ads display went down 50%. So I, oh, I realized I... I need to put this back on, and then they, uh, people downloaded it, and it was back normal. So it doubles the number of ads you can show. But there's, there's a twist to that. Uh, what I'm doing right now is showing different ads in, uh, in, in the phone. And if this ad, for example, the phone, uh, the phone ad doesn't work, it's not available, okay, I don't refresh it, I go on to a different provider. And then I show ad from a different provider. And if that doesn't work, then a couple minutes later, then I try this one again. So it, it gives you different options in different countries to be able to show ads in case the primary one doesn't work. So that's another way I'm getting a lot more ads being shown. Um, though, I'll tell you, the one from Microsoft, the one that, that actually has been more successful, though uh, I've seen from, from my other providers that especially in some countries, in Asian countries, the supply of ads is lower, so I get more, much more ads from other, other providers of ads. When your networks are not very good, do you find that the apps stutter when you're trying to get ads, or do you do that on the background thread or something? Uh, 
sometimes. Sometimes I stutter. Uh, yeah. And sometimes, but not always. So I don't know. Let me add uh, one more thing. So this is one of my favorite apps. Uh, this is Reversi. Downloads have remained fairly static. So you know, I liked it, but I, I like my app, but I said, you know, it's not moving. It's, it's, it's saying the same number of, uh, of ad views. So the next thing I did uh, is I improved what I said before, the graphics, achievements, leaderboards. I added all the features to be able to, to get it, more people to use it more time. And that doubled the number of views. And then on top of that, I added the optimization, added add to all the pages, added the multiple suppliers, uh, added uh, all these fixes also to the Noto version, to the older version. Um, I added multiple ad units from different providers. And if you add it all up, it again doubled the number of ads that I was showing. So you can see that I was showing a certain number of ads and multiplied it by four by doing everything I, told, uh, I talked to you about. Like changing the icon, I mean, all of that together. And, and now it's pretty much stabilized where, where you see there. But it, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's things you can do to, to actually get more, um, uh, get more views and get more, um, uh, get more ads being shown. Yes? So, so what's an app spend in the marketplace for a certain amount of time? How do people, you know, like app, you, know, you said it's at that low level. How do people even see it after that? It's not, it's not in the, unless it's like one of the top 20. It's, it, most of my apps are in the top 20. But, if they, but the new ones, <laughs> but no, but, but, all of us get no, 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 but, 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 that, but all the new ones are not there. All, all the new ones that I've, that I've delivered, they're not in the top 10. They don't exist. So all the ones that I've delivered this year, they're not in the top 10, 20. Uh, what the, the, the way I do it is make sure that it, whenever you release it, it's awesome because it, it appears in the new app. A lot of people try in the new apps. Icon has to be great. And as soon as you get an app that, has, that is really great, that has a great experience, people start commenting in it. And then you cross promote it from others, uh, and that's about it. I haven't found a lot of success from, uh, uh, from I don't know, paying advertising or reviews, at least to me, that hasn't worked. Probably it works for some, someone else. Uh, but um, it, it, it is just, you need to make sure that when you launch it, Everything that I talked there is perfectly done. It's an amazing experience. And then you get good reviews. Actually, I was surprised there was a, a card game in my category that was released at the same time I released another app. And it seems it's really good. It's gotten like 500 reviews already in two months. But the app is very good. I mean, if it, that, that's what it is. And it's, it's very smooth, very well done, very good sounds, very good UI. And it has achievements, it has all of that. So people like to use it. Uh, one last question, and I finish the presentation. Drive search through the web and then I have a blog that gets viewed about 300 times a day. Um, it, 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 uh, it probably talks about the other apps. I don't. I, not, I don't you don't see conversion there. I don't. Even though there's a click a buy now, I haven't. I actually haven't tracked it. I don't know. I I, I, I couldn't tell you. Probably not. Actually, no. I, not because 90% of the views are one page the page that talks about scoring in Bagamon. People get really, really pissed off about the scoring because it's, <laughs> because it's the official ELO scoring, statistically valid depending on your ELO rating, which is very sophisticated. And people get angry when they actually don't go faster because it's the official international standard of ELO rating, which needs a lot of statistics to explain. So people get pissed off and they go to that page. So no, I don't think that uh, that drives a lot of traffic. But it, it explains in a really nice way how that works. Um, I think I'm done in time, but I want to make sure I leave time for a couple more questions. How do you do your work for Microsoft? I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> How do I do my work for Microsoft? Well, it's taken me more than a year and a half to do this. And you have to divide it in two because it's paid and free are the same. And I love vacations. I love my vacations. Most of these apps come after Christmas or after Thanksgiving. That's when I do the, the, the big push. And now what I'm doing more and more is outsourcing. Outsourcing the graphic design to a designer, outsourcing the music, outsourcing, and copying. I mean, the latest ones take me uh, 40 hours because I've already, I copy most of the code for, the, the only thing that's new is really the logic for that one, which takes, I don't know, three, 30, 40 hours. The rest is, is copying from other places. Uh, the first one took me about three months to do the first one. And, uh, and Thanksgiving, no, it was, that, that was uh, Easter. Yeah, uh, yes. How do you maximize your visibility via search in terms of keywords and things like that? Search. I don't know how search works. I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't have a good experience with search, neither on the web, neither on the phone. 
I don't know how it works. Sorry, I cannot tell you. I, I have some keywords in my blog, but I don't think it's doing a lot. I, I'm not, the only thing that's important to remember is there's only five keywords that the search tracks. So in your keywords, when you're submitting your app, you, pay, you, pay fifth, you put 15, only the first five are counted. So we need to make sure the first five are really good, the first five keywords. The rest are not used at all. I don't know why they allow you to do that. Couple more questions, well, yeah. Okay, if we have a beta app now, just a beta app, and we wanna add uh, the ad version of that beta app, does that kill uh, or, or decrease the revenue of the beta app? Or would the sum actually be more or equal to the one, what, what you used to make uh, in the beta only version? I'm sorry, you said uh, a beta version? You already have a paid version. A paid then version. You okay. add a free uh, style with ads. So does that hurt hurt your revenue, or actually would end up more or the same? Or I, I don't know for your specific app, but definitely if you have a paid version, suddenly you add a free version. I mean, people are going to gravitate towards the, pre, the free version. So the question is, are you going to make more on ads or on the paid? If if you think you're going to make more on ads, well, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, but you have enough features or reason for them to pay for it. But it will diminish the number of paid apps. I would say, in my case, 98% of the revenue comes from the, from the, not the free version, the ad supported version. So, but the paid version is whoever wants to get rid of the ads, go ahead and pay. Uh, to, to me, that's extra money. But 95% 90, of revenue is the, is the ads. So that, that's the way it works with mine because it is actually lots of usage of the game. If it's an, uh, an app that you're only going to use once a month to store some passwords, then this model wouldn't work. You probably should go with the paid one. Yeah. Uh, yes? Do you have any uh, statistics for the views versus the clicks on the ads? If I statistics on views versus clicks, no, I don't have statistics. Uh, it, the, the, the ad control should do it, but it, they only actually show you the views, not the clicks, so I don't know. I do have statistics for clicks for the other ad providers, uh, Google and uh, uh, Mobfox. It's about... I don't know, 0.3%, uh, very little. In my case, yeah. I'm sorry, you had a question? Are you going to talk about ECPM? Uh, no, I'm not going to talk about ECPM, but it, I will tell you that it's fairly low for me. Uh, but because of the millions and millions and millions of downloads, that's good. I, I don't control the ECPM. I think that, that's, that is one important point. I don't control the ECPM. Uh, that is the amount of money you get per views. That's outside of my control. Sometimes it's really high, sometimes really low. At the end of the month, sometimes it's low. Sometimes, for some reason, it goes really high for to two dollars. It changes. It varies. It's a mystery. It really, but it doesn't matter. I don't control it. What I do control is this. I control the number of downloads, the number of views, and it, it goes down, goes up. Sometimes it actually has gone a bit down than at the beginning. It's lower, but my ad views had more than multiplied by by six because I keep on adding more more apps and then more views. No, that so that more than takes into consideration any any ad uh, cost. Though comparing it to all the other two ad providers that I've used from well, the major ones, this is much better, much better. Uh, unfortunately, it's not available in other countries that I can see. I, I don't have reports for that, but yeah. Have you experimented at all with the relationship between the, the categories of ads and the CPM? Yes, I experiment a lot. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think what happens is supply and demand. Uh, so sometimes there's more supply of people of, of a paying customer that wants to pay more, so you get paid more. It's just a mystery. It's really a mystery. I, I, at least I don't I don't know how it works. So I trade different ones. I try to make sure the ads are relevant to the app. But what ads are relevant to a reverse or a bagamon app? It's more difficult. Uh, I'm, I'm, this one is an area I don't control. So therefore, uh, I try to control the ad views, which I control, and the usage of the app. Yes. I think I saw a slide that said something like 30 cents per... Yeah, I, I had that, but the thing is, it varies. It varies tremendously. It varies by, by hour, it varies by geography, it varies by date. So let me give you one, one number. My, I have one app that has like $9. $9 of eCPM. Wow! And I make out of that app probably 30 cents a day. It's the kids app. Because there's only a few app ads, they, they click on them, but, but there's only very few ads. The apps that, that have much more ads, I mean, hundreds of thousands of ad views per day, uh, the, 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 the revenue is much lower because, I mean, it's the same ad being shown against the same person. Uh, you shouldn't get paid for that. But uh, if after one million times they haven't seen it, I mean, they're not gonna touch it again. <laughs> Whereas the kids touch everything. But, but, but I get, a, I mean, 100 times more revenue from the, from the ones that download 100,000 ads a day. So, 
So it, it really depends a lot on the app, the day, the country, the geo. You can see at 1 o'clock in the morning, extremely high. Yeah, but who's using your app at 1 o'clock in the morning? Oh, there are some people, but yeah, not, not that many. So it's a, a bottom line, it's a variable I don't control. I don't want to control. I cannot control it. I don't know how it works. I try to put, make sure the ads are the right ads. Uh, but if uh, there's no, you shouldn't think about manipulating it or changing that. And what you can do is make sure your app is great, that your app is used more, that your app is downloaded more, and therefore your app uh, makes your user happy and they want to play it more and more and more and more. Yeah. A couple more questions and I think I will have to close. Yes. How much of the graphics code is shared between the applications? The, the graphic code. Yeah. Like the actual drawing. Uh, not a lot. Uh, I mean, the concepts, the graphic concepts, the, the, the XML is shared, the, the overall structure is shared between the apps. The, more, the section where you have the more apps, where you actually go and see my other apps, that's fairly shared. The code to, share, to show the ads is shared. But every app is very different. The one is you're drawing some laser lines. The other is moving checkers. Not, not a lot. Like some concepts are, but not a lot. That's the part that takes a little bit more time. Uh, really, two more questions, and I'll stay here to, to answer more, because I, and some of you might have to leave. So uh, I see you uh, many uh, develop games. I wonder if you have plans to develop other apps. Depends. Depends which app. No, I don't. No, I, uh, I do what, I, what excites me. I, do, I, I make sure I read all the rules. And I'm the expert on any of these games. I really know all the rules of Bagaman. There are lots, lots, all the rules of, of checkers, all the rules of reversing. You need to really spend time and love that. And that's what I like to do. So no, there's, I, I thought about doing an app, but the reality is I don't think people use apps that much. I think they use games more. I mean, the, again, I'm showing ads. That's my revenue model for these apps. I want them to use it every day, or 279 hours in this case. Uh, I, I don't know what app can you do, I mean, that, that you want to have people using it two hours a day that actually people have to delete it because their wife's telling them, you know, go to bed. So that's, what I, that's, that's the model for ads. But if you're going to do paid, then there's some apps. So no, I, I, don't, I don't plan. One, so last one. How many games will you have to create before you can quit your day job? <laughs> <laughs> more, many more. <laughs> so I should consider Windows 8, so that's another option. But I, I, I just, I'm running out of time. I'm just maintaining it, just I'm, I'm running out of time. But it's a, a, a lot more, a lot more. It's, uh, uh, I think it's great. I think it's a good, good uh, support. It, it gives me a lot of incentive to keep on doing it, but not to quit my day job. A great day job here is really good. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, one more, and that's it. So when the impression jumped like that, did the CPM went up? Yes. It no, it went down. It went down. It went down. Yeah, because the user were not clicking. Well, the, the, you were showing many more ads, but still, not, uh, the number of clicks probably went up, but not went up enough. I'm guessing. I, I don't know the math. I don't know the math behind it. So it went down, but it, uh, this one quadrupled. But the, the revenue didn't jump like four times, I guess. No, I, uh, but it revenue jumped about three times. So, so it is. I mean, it went down. Uh, the the but not enough. Not uh, the number of ad views were much more. So it compensates for that uh, by far. Because you're actually getting more people to see more ads because they're playing more. Uh, so it does, uh, it, it, it did go down. So it's gone down and down and down and down for the past year. Yeah, so I, I told you a number, but every, every week is down. But the number of ad views go, go up higher even faster. So that's, uh, that's good. And because we're going to be selling a lot more phones, because you're going to do great apps, it's even going to go higher and higher. Thank you very much. I'll be here to answer more questions.